Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about another class of infinite series, the telescoping series, that are easy to develop an explicit formula for the partial sums, just like we did with the geometric series. The series of this form don't have the exact same explicit form as our geometric series did, but what you're going to see, the idea of the telescoping series is that when you expand these partial sums, the middle terms will end up canceling out and you're able to telescope all of the sums into just a couple terms. So then let's jump right into our first telescoping series. Here we have the sum from one to infinity of the cosine of one over k minus cosine of one over k plus one. And as always, let's just go right ahead and talk about the partial sums. Let's just develop and look at what the general nth partial sum would be. So starting with k equals one, this would be the cosine of one over one, which is just one minus the cosine of one over k plus one. If k is one, and this would be one over two or one half. So this is the cosine of one half. And we'll just keep going right along. So plus the next one, iterate up. Our k value is now two. So what we get here is the cosine of one over two. So k is two in this case, in the second sum term of the summation, minus the cosine of one over three, three being two plus one. And as you can see, this goes on and on all the way down to, we'd have our last or nth term in our nth partial sum would be the cosine of one over n minus the cosine of one over n plus one. And I've only written out that many terms because I've ran out of my board space, but hopefully you can see what's going on right here. Because of this nature of the cosine of one over k minus the cosine of one over k plus one, what you get are these pairs of, of uh, summations right here, where we have, or the pairs of the terms, I should say. I have minus cosine of one half, but then the first term in the next part of the summation as I iterate up is exactly the same except for it's positive. So these together equal zero. Then I have minus the cosine of one third, but the first term of this next iteration would be the positive ver version of cosine of one third. So that would equal zero all the way down to here. So if we're at the nth term of this, we have the cosine of one over n, but one over n would have been actually the, the negative of that, the opposite, it would have been the term right before that. So those two equal zero. And this is, again, the telescoping nature, why we call these telescoping series, where and it doesn't have to just be two terms, they could have different natures, but as you add these together, the terms in the middle will all cancel each other out, and this large nth, nth partial sum actually collapses or telescopes, and we can have an easy explicit formula for the nth partial sum would always just be the cosine of one, that first term that does not get canceled, and then this minus the cosine of one over n plus one. And we know the value of this infinite series is equal to the limit of this nth partial sum right here. So all we need to do at this point is take the limit as n goes to infinity of this s of n or the nth partial sum. And so I'll write that in here. So that'd be the cosine of one minus the cosine of one over n plus one. In this case right here, uh, we're taking the, the limit as n goes to infinity. This is just a constant. There is no n there, so that will stay the cosine of one minus the cosine of one over n plus one. But we do know that as we apply this limit, this inside the cosine will go to zero. So this is the cosine of zero, or in other words, this simplifies down to be the cosine of one minus one. And if we plug that into our calculator real quick, we'll realize that this value, an approximation of that value, would be negative 0 0.46. A word of caution and a quick recap for this example right here. First, I just wanna say, 
you might see a pattern in this, and especially if you do a couple of these, but you need to be careful because there's different forms of telescoping series. The way to really deal with the telescoping series is to write out at least a few of these terms of the nth partial sum, see if you can see the pattern and what terms are canceling, and determine which of the terms are left. And almost always, really always for these, will be this, these n terms right here that end up surviving. Which ones? You'll have to do the investigation. Through some quick investigation, again, you'll get an explicit formula for the nth partial sum. And again, just to really hit it on this so many times, if we're evaluating the infinite series, what we're actually doing is finding the action of this sequence developed by the partial sum. So we have our explicit formula for the partial sum. We take the limit as n goes to infinity, evaluate it as we always have with limits, getting our value for this infinite sum. All right, let's tackle one more example of a telescoping series. You're going to see some like this, and if you look at this series right here, you might not immediately identify it as a telescoping series, because importantly, as you saw before, we need these multiple terms in the definition of the summation or of these terms, so we can have these terms cancel and end up with the beginning and the end. Um, but what we know about this is that we actually can write this as the summation of individual terms if we use partial fractions and if this denominator is factorable. You hopefully aren't too far removed from your experience of partial fractions when dealing with integrals and rational functions. But just to remind you, what we first need to do is factor this denominator. And in this case, if we just kind of walk through the guess and check method real fast, um, we have 25k squared. I'm either going to have 25k and 1k, or I'm going to have 5 and a 5. This feels like a 5k and a 5k, just because the nature of these numbers not being too ridiculously large. When you think more about that, hopefully at this point you're really good at factoring. It's an important skill in all of mathematics moving forward. Um, these other terms, I need a plus 1 and a minus 4, or a minus 4 and a plus 1. Um, I actually want to have a positive 4, so it doesn't matter which one I use here. I'll write a plus four right here and a minus one um, because this is 20K minus the 5K to give me the 15K. All right, and so what I know is, is that this can be written of two separate rational functions that have these linear factors right here. So 5K plus four and 5K minus one. We'll use uh, coefficients or values of A and B here to set things up. So then what I do is multiply both sides by this denominator. What that will give me is that 20 is equal to A times this 5K minus 1. So that's always how that works, 5K minus 1. And the B will be multiplied by the 5K plus 4. And then I do some distribution over here and clean things up. So what do I get here? I'll do 5AK minus A plus 5bk um, plus 4b. And so, importantly in this case, what I know is, is that this, the a, 5ak and 5bk must equal zero because there's no k term over here. So I know that 5a plus 5b must equal zero, the k coefficient. And then for the constant of 20, that comes from this negative a and plus 4. So it'd be negative a plus 4b equals 20. Um, one thing that I'll do right out the gate, so I'm just going to divide both sides of this equation by 5 um, to make life easy. So this is a plus b equals 0. And then just maybe one more step so I can do some substitution here. Let's uh, subtract over the b. So another way of writing this is just to say, well, A and B must be opposites. So A equals negative B. That's the only way they equal zero. But you can, you can think about that by subtracting B to both sides. Then uh, I can solve this by making a substitution here. Pretty simple uh, system of linear equations. Uh, so A equals negative B. So this right here, if I inject this information in right here, so just to emphasize this real fast, I'm plugging in the negative B in for the a right here. Um, what I get when I do that is negative, negative b plus 4b equals 20. Well, this is b plus 4b gives me 5b equals 20. Dividing by 5 gives me that b equals 4. Well, if b equals 4, 
I know that a and b are opposites, so that must mean that a is equal to negative 4. Okay, and so with that information, as with any time I use partial fractions, I'm just going to replace this version of this expression uh, with what I had before. So now I have it in multiple terms. And so I'll just do that right here. So what this is now is the summation. So nothing's changed here from k equals 1 to infinity. Um, and so a is negative 4. Uh, here's a little trick that I'll just do on the fly here. It makes my life a little bit easier when looking at the partial sums here in a second is I want my negative term to be the second term. You'll just notice that. You probably noticed in the previous one, it makes seeing the cancellations much cleaner. And so uh, I'm actually, so this is negative four right here. So I'll just write this as negative four, and this is a positive four. But when I write it over here, I'm gonna write this term first. It doesn't matter which one I write in which order. But again, just gonna make my life a bit easier. So four over k minus one, and then minus 4 over 5k plus 4. And as I did with my previous example, what I'm just going to do is investigate the nth partial sum. So let's go through just a few of these terms. Uh, if k is equal to 1, this is going to be 4 over 5 minus 1. So this ends up being 4 over 4 minus 4 over, if k equals 1 here, it would be 5 plus 4 is 9. So 4 over 4, or 4 fourths, or 1, minus 4 ninths. All right, so let's do at least, uh, let's do two or three more here. Uh, if k is equal to 2, this is 4 over 10 minus 1, so that's 4 ninths, minus 4 over, if k is equal to 2 again, that's 10 plus 4 is 14. Uh, yeah, just for kicks, let's do at least one more that we can see here is um, if I have a 3 for k, that's 15 minus 1 is 4 fourteenths. By the way, if we expect this to be a telescoping series, you can kind of see this, right? I expect this to be a negative 4 ninths plus 4 ninths minus 14 fourths plus 14 fourths. So it's working out perfect. I'm feeling really good about this. Uh, k is 1, 2, 3 at this point. So 4 over 15 plus 4, which will be 4 nineteenths. All right, so yada, yada, yada. Let's look at the last or the nth term here real fast. Uh, let me just clean up this stuff so I don't get too confused and it doesn't get too messy. All right, that feels a lot better. It's kind of like cleaning your room. It just, you just feel more at peace when you have a lot of space like that. Uh, now that I have the space, actually, let's do two more terms. I was just gonna jump to the nth term, but let's go to the n minus one term just so we can be convinced that we have this telescoping action all the way down. It seems pretty obvious, but let's just do that here. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is the n minus one term. So the next to last, I'm going, I'm doing the nth partial sum, which will be the last term. So n minus one. So if I have four and then k here is n minus one, so five times n minus one minus one. And then here I have minus four over five n minus one plus four. Okay, and then now the nth term, the last term here would be four over five n minus one plus four over five n plus four. A big part of the reason I just decided to do these last two terms, I wanna just be convinced and kind of see in a greedy way, like why this is working, like why are these becoming perfect, perfectly canceling out or this telescoping action? And it really comes from the investigation of this term right here. If I simplify out by distributing this five to both these terms, I get five n and then minus five, but plus four, so I get five n minus one. So actually I feel really good about this now. I see what's going on. I see that this term right here is the positive version of this term. They're opposites and they cancel. That will happen all the way down, all the way down, telescoping this nth partial sum. The only terms that I will have left for the nth partial sum will be this four over four or one. And then, oh, I messed up here. Maybe some of you caught that. That should be a minus. So minus that last term, which would be minus 4 over 5n plus 4. Um, so we found an explicit formula for our nth partial sum. We know then that this equals the limit as n goes to infinity of this explicit definition of the nth partial sum. So we have 4 over 5n plus 4. And the good news is this is a very easy limit to deal with. 
as n goes to infinity, this term is constant. This term right here, because it's a, it's a rational term that has a denominator that has a degree higher than the numerator, this just goes to zero, giving us that this infinite series right here uh, converges to one. So just to recap, generally speaking, a telescoping series will be of this form where you have two terms in the summation, one positive and one negative to create this canceling. That doesn't have to be the case, but especially generally in the beginning, that's of the nature you'll see these telescoping series. If you're given something, and this is a rational function that we use partial fractions with, but that's not the only technique to identify a telescoping series, Always the thought is if I'm giving one thing and I'm, I'm thinking this is telescoping, is how can I split this up into multiple terms or identities and other algebraic tricks I can do to do that? Then always, please always for your own good, throw down a handful of the, the terms of the summation to convince yourself it actually is a telescoping action that these middle terms all cancel out. After they cancel out, you're always going to be left just with these terms on the ends that don't get, don't have pairs, that don't have mates that cancel them out. Um, once you have that, you have an explicit formula for the nth partial sum, which then makes it easy to evaluate the summation. In this case, letting n go to infinity showed us that this infinite series of this form converges to one.